Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks for joining me today on my channel where I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today's video is the result of my What Would You Choose Craft My Stash Challenge from last week. I'm so excited to share with you the comments that were chosen and what I created. Here we go. Congratulations, Linda French. I chose your comment where you suggested I use the butterfly bag, tall signs, round wood blocks, buckets, and small black kettles. I chose four of those five items. You can see them here. And I am so excited with what I created using these. The first thing I'm doing with the tall Easter sign is removing the hanger and the strange googly eyes and the raffia bow and the feet. We're going to cut this long sign into two pieces the same length and then put them side by side to create a shorter, wider sign. So here I'm just measuring to find the center and then we'll draw a line down the middle and use our uh, box cutter or utility knife from Dollar Tree to cut this sign in half and here's our two pieces that we come up with now to connect them together I'm flipping them over to the back and using one of these giant craft sticks hot glued down the center along with a couple smaller pieces at the top and bottom to connect them together now if I would have thought about this a little more I would have connected them together on the back side because I'm going to end up mod podging on the front of my sign, but whatever, this is how it happened, so that's what I'm sharing with you. Now, with my butterfly bag, I'm gonna go ahead and carefully cut out one, the front side of the gift bag, and then cut off a little bit of the stripes at both the top and bottom, which will also take off the holes from the little handle there. So here's what I have for the bag, and we're going to just see where we're going to get this on the center of our sign. Now I decided I wanted to use the wood round and the butterfly from the other side of the bag um, just to make that pop out of the center. So here I traced the wood round and I'm going to cut out the circle. I am actually going to end up just cutting out the butterfly, but this was my creative process. I was going to do the whole circle first. So with my wood round, I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and go around the edges just to give it more of a finished look. And here, like I said, I had decided to just go ahead and fussy cut around the butterfly to Mod Podge to the top of the wood round. So now coming back to the sign, I'm going to put a layer of Mod Podge over this and then we're going to glue the bag right down there, lining it up as best we can on the edges. And then we will have a little bit um, leftover that's hanging over that once it's dry, we'll go ahead and trim that off with our craft knife. Coming back to the wood round now um, to add a little pop of color and the reason I decided decided just to fussy cut around the butterfly is I wanted to add the maize or the yellow chalk paint to the top of the circle, um, sand the edges a little bit, and then just add some Mod Podge and stick this down in the center of our wood round. Once that's down, we'll also add a layer of Mod Podge to the top to make sure that it stays down. And here coming back to the sign, like I said, we're trimming off any excess pieces of the gift bag to have a nice crisp edge all the way around our sign. And now taking the wood round, we'll just go ahead then and hot glue that to the center of our bag.
Next, to add some more dimension to the top of our sign, I'm taking some jute twine from Dollar Tree, attaching it with some hot glue at the back, and I'm just going to wrap this three times around the top of my sign, and then trim it and add some hot glue again. Now, the idea that came to me for the kettles was to make these into three mini little flower pots. So I'm gonna spray them with this Rust-Oleum spray paint in Summer Squash. It's a beautiful yellow and it pretty much matches the maize chalk paint. So here I'm marking where the center is and I'm taking these push pins from Dollar Tree that have the little hook on them. I did cut off most of the push pin with my metal cutters and I'm twisting it in and then putting some hot glue and attaching that little hook there in the center. And then I'll do two more measuring in two inches from the right side edge and two inches from the left side edge as well. Now I did notice that the graphic on this bag was a little off center. You can see there's a little bit more white on the left. So I had to do something about that. So I decided to take some of these green sticker letters that I just had in my stash and I'm just going to make the word spring there on the left hand side to fill in that space. And here's my three little pots hanging. And then for inside the pots, I took the smallest little pieces of floral foam and hot glued them into the bottom of the pots. And then we will fill those with a little bit of greenery and florals. If you're new to my channel today, I sure hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. I love to share with you budget home decor DIYs and do fun things like this video where I challenge my viewers to help me craft my stash. Here I'm just adding a wire jute twine to the back for a hanger and then we're gonna hang our three little flower pots at the bottom of our sign and this first Craft My Stash DIY is complete. I would love to know what you guys think of this project using those four items that I was challenged with. What would you have done different using the tall Easter sign, the black pots, the wood round, and the butterfly gift bag? Congratulations, Madeline Sumner. You are my next comment that was randomly chosen. You challenged me with the floating glass frame, the microfiber mop head, and the calendars. So I'm going to use these three items in this next project. I'm actually using three of the frames, this other calendar that I shared, the microfiber mop head, and a thick wooden dowel. You could also use the handle from a toilet bowl plunger from Dollar Tree. So the first thing I'm doing is removing all the glass from these frames and the backing. And instead of staying with the solid black, I'm just dry brushing some white just to lighten up these black plastic frames for spring. Then coming to my calendar, this was from 2019, really bright, vibrant florals. I'm looking for three different ones that I'm gonna be able to cut a four inch by four inch square without getting any wording. So that's what I'm doing here. And I found more than three, but these are the three that I decided to use that had slightly different background colors. So then with my Fiskars trimmer, I'm just going to, in one corner of each of these pages, cut a four inch by four inch piece of the floral image. Now these frames actually have two pieces of glass and this is the bottom one and then you have the top one that goes over top. So I just decided to tape my four inch image on top of the one that was already there. I They weren't exactly straight so I'm using this little measuring mat underneath here to try to get my images as centered as possible. So once I had all three of those taped in, 
I'm going to come back to my frames and I wanted to just do a light layer of Mod Podge just so the paint wouldn't chip off too easily from these frames. It's just an added step that I wanted to do just to um, help with the longevity of my project. Then when those are dry, I'm popping my glass and my backings back into the frames and we'll be ready to finish up this project. Now coming to the wooden dowel, I'm going to just take my black chalk paint and I'm just sponge painting, just brushing it on lightly with the foam brush and making our uh, dowel black to match our project. So with the microfiber mop head, I decided to make a triple strand of it and I'm going to tie a knot on each end of the black dowel. We're going to use the mop head as the hanging mechanism for this picture frame project that we're making. So to connect my three frames, I did put some fix all adhesive between them and then I'm taking this um, large craft stick and hot gluing it where the seams of the two pictures meet just so that this is now one unit rather than three separate frames that we're going to hang from the black wooden dowel. So I decided to take more of those craft sticks, three more actually, and I'm going to also paint those black to match the dowel. And then we're going to cut each one in half and use those, I guess you'd kind of call them braces, to glue uh, to the frames here. And then we're going to glue them up to the dowel. I think you can see what I'm doing. And here it is with our floating frames, our calendar images, and our mop head using um, it as the hanger. Now, if you didn't want those craft stick pieces, you could just glue that dowel right to the top of the frames and have it a little bit smaller. Congratulations, Debbie Lerma, for my third comment that was chosen. You wanted me to use the placemat, the tower blocks, the white nautical rope, and the wreath form. That's what I'm doing on this third DIY. So I really hope you like how this project turned out and can use your stash to create something similar. So the first thing I'm doing, I have this wreath form upside down. So it's like touching the table. It's not coming up at me, if that makes sense. And I'm just tracing around that second wire and then cutting out our placemat. Next, I'm taking 48 of our tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to stain these with our Waverly Antique Wax. You guys know I love this stuff. It doesn't smell stinky like all the other stains, but does a fabulous job and washes off your hands really easily. Now I did spray paint my wreath form white just so it would blend in better. And I decided I needed a white foam board to make the back of my project a little more sturdy. So I traced around that same circle of the wreath form that I did for the placemat and cut that out with my craft knife. Now I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree wood glue. It's basically tacky glue and I'm gluing my placemat circle now to my foam board circle. You can see there's a couple little gaps at the top and the bottom, but that's not gonna matter because you're not gonna see that. Now taking my hot glue, I'm going to go around the very edge of my placemat image, and then we're going to set the wire wreath form down there, right? That same circle that we traced around is now glued to our placemat. Then I figured out that I could fit eight of these tumbling tower blocks in each of these six sections of the wreath form. So here I'm gluing, kind of balancing each block on the first or the innermost 
out to that third circle of the wreath form. I think you can see there what I did. So I glued those all the way around. And then with that last outer loop of the wreath form, I'm going to take the nautical rope and run a bead of hot glue there and then use the nautical rope to fill in that space between the outside of the wreath form and the tumbling tower blocks. I was so happy with how this project, I've liked all of the projects so far from this uh, craft my stash challenge. Um, but I really loved how this one came together. It's got a little bit of a nautical feel with the rope. Um, I love the dark stain of the tumbling tower blocks and just love how cute and farmhouse this looks. You can see I also took the nautical rope around the center of the circle as well. And for our final comment, congratulations, Hope Richardson. You challenged me to use the white plastic chopping mat, the chalkboard, and the galvanized buckets. So I'm going to do just that. Use the white cutting board, a chalkboard, and one of the galvanized buckets that has the twine around the top. Now my idea for this was a cute farmhouse chalkboard um, planter that could hang on the wall. So I wanted to make this white plastic cutting board look like wood. So I'm using that hazelnut colored Waverly chalk paint, and then I'm going to dry brush the truffle over the top again to make it look like some wood grain. Then we're gonna take the chalkboard and once we get that all uh, unwrapped, we're going to attach this here with some hot glue kind of to the center of this cutting board. Now I wanna use these giant craft sticks on either side um, for a little added detail, but I'm using them right now just to kind of center the chalkboard. So I put a bunch of hot glue on the back of the chalkboard and we're gonna just glue this down to our cutting board here and yes i know the handle is on the bottom that is where i want it for this diy next taking two of these giant craft sticks i had cut them in halves so i have four halves i want to paint them to look like metal um there was something in a project I saw a while back where they had a chalk, a wood chalkboard frame that had like metal brackets on it. So that's what I'm trying to recreate here with elephant chalk paint and also silver lining, just kind of blending those two grays together and uh, making this look like some galvanized metal. So I'm gonna make these faux metal brackets just on the top two corners. So that's why I put that craft stick there and kind of measured to draw um, where the corner of the cutting board was. And then I'm going to hot glue that on. I believe I measured in three inches from the corner um, is where that straight edge of the craft stick is. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the right hand side. and hot glue that one into place as well. Now we're gonna make the piece that's coming down so that we have our two corners and it's just gonna be a tiny little piece cut straight across there and then hot glued on each side. Now to make little rivets on our metal, I'm using these um, adhesive dots from Dollar Tree. These are kind of a large size, um, but I'm just hot gluing three on each corner. And then we're gonna go back over these with our elephant chalk paint to blend them in with the metal looks on the corners.
Now moving on to our third item, the metal bucket. I'm taking my Crocodile Big Bite Chomper and I'm able to punch a hole there in the metal bucket. I'm doing two holes to kind of line up with where that handle is. And I'm going to run some jute twine through the bucket and then around the little handle of the cutting board. And I run it through the bucket two times and then tie it in a knot. And there we have our hanging planter. So once I fill that with some floral foam and some of this Spanish moss that I had on hand, then I'm going to put in some of these pieces of greenery bouquet from Dollar Tree. These are kind of like a flocked spring floral and there's three different varieties. I'm just putting one of each in our bucket and arranging them. And lastly, using one of these little chalk writers from Dollar Tree, I'm just making some squiggles on our chalkboard and writing Hello Spring. Of course, you can write whatever you want and change out the florals for this season as well. All right, so here's our fourth DIY from my Craft My Stash Challenge. I just love how this turned out. Looks like a wood frame with the little metal, metal brackets on the top and the bottom. Thanks so much again for joining me here. I hope you'll give this video a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more Craft My Stash Challenge videos. And also let me know which of these four DIYs was your favorite. To my four winners, please message me at monarchmomdiy at gmail.com so I can get your prize to you. Thanks so much, everyone, for all the support and love, and we'll see you soon.